So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I'm lucky enough to get to travel all over the world. And there are some places that I've traveled to that I don't ever want to leave. And this place here in Suriname is one of those places. We have found some amazing snakes out here. We found a little anaconda, but you know what we haven't found yet? is a giant anaconda. And in talking with the hunters that I'm out here camping with, they say that the anaconda is one of the most common snakes right here in this area. And they've seen a bunch of them that exceed 20 feet. And I really don't wanna leave this place until I get my hands on a giant anaconda. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. So when we think about the anaconda's habitat, we all see the images that come out of Venezuela of those never-ending sea of wetlands where you get in there up to your waist until you find a giant anaconda. And we think, because those are the most common videos that we've seen, that that is the anaconda's only habitat. And that is actually not true. When you have an animal like an anaconda that has a very wide range, it's gonna utilize whatever habitat is available to them. And here in Suriname, it's these rocks behind me along the Quarantine River. So this time of year is actually the rainy season. It should be downpouring right now. But unfortunately, we're here during an El Nino year, and therefore this place is having the worst drought that they've had in about 150 years. And therefore, that river is really low. Where I'm standing right now, I should be up to my waist in the water. And the water level should be all the way up there. But that, can work towards our advantage when we're looking for anacondas. So these rocks are providing a lot of cover. They're radiating heat that's warming up that water. They've got everything they need right here in this location. Not only that, but its primary food source in this area, which are paca, they're basically about the half the size of a capybara. That is their primary food source here, and those paca will come down, go right to the water's edge to get a drink, and that anaconda is gonna be waiting in these little coves under the rocks, waiting in ambush for them. And anacondas aren't the only ones that are eating pacas out here. They're, again, think of them like big jungle rats. That's what we're eating out here too. When we're out here primitive camping, we can't bring enough food on the small boats to last 10 days. So we have been surviving on what we are able to hunt and what we're able to pull out of this river. And if I can just take a little moment to uh, plug my other channel, Dave Kaufman's Fishing Adventures, I filmed an entire feature length movie on survival fishing here in the Amazon. That's gonna come up soon. And if you wanna know what paca, which are again, giant forest rats, what they actually taste like, check out my all new channel, Dave Kaufman Eats the World. All right, enough shameless plugs for my other channels. We are gonna walk around these rocks here and look in all these little crevices and see what we can find in here. The coolest thing is, is that this is where we're camping. We don't have to go far for my chance to find one of these anacondas that are out here. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. Okay, so just over here, they just spotted an anaconda. I don't know how big it is yet, but we're about to find out. I'm in sandals, and these are very thorny. Where is he? It's over there? Yeah, right there. See him? Oh, holy crap, he's huge. Oh, it's a big one. All right. Um, there's a big, big anaconda down here. Um, Only like that? You know what? What else is down there? Here, hold this. Mark, Mark's coming. I need like, but um, some uh, don't shine that light. That, that don't light. I, I need light on him. Um, How are you gonna do it? He's wedging those just, rocks. Just let me check it out. Where's the head? It's gonna come up, right? Yep. So um, if you grab the I'll tail, because he's I'll wedging in these rocks right here. I'm grab it. I'll grab it. This is one of the most exciting moments of my life. We've got a huge anaconda. I have been looking for anacondas in the Amazon for years, oh, and here he is. Give this a thumb so thumb. now we've got to figure out, he's wedged in rocks in there, and all that's sticking out is his tail. And we've got to, oh. we've got to figure out how to get him out. Gone. No, he's not gone. There's no way he's gone. It's gone. <laughs> he's under these rocks. 
Yes, but to get him there now. Mm. Oh, see the tail there, but tail. No. see the tail. You want to try because the minute I touch it, it's bent. Well, There's so many. I see it. I mean, I see can that tail in there. The head's probably wedged in the rocks. Yeah. You can see the tail. Where is the tail? Um, way see. down under this one rock. It's gone. It's gone. But, but it's around here. We know it's here. Yeah. It's here. So here's, We're going to put some bait for it. Yeah. Is he in a crevice or is he coming out over on the side? There are, there are a lot of um, caves at the bottom here. Okay, so we lost this guy. Um, he was, he, by the time we got here, he was like three fourths of the way wedged into a rock. And uh, these rocks aren't very smooth. They're, they're kind of rough. My concern was, is that if we grabbed him by the tail and pulled him out, we're pulling him backwards past these really rough rocks and we're pulling him against the scales. So what Mark and I had to do was we had to sit there and kind of figure out a way to get him out of those rocks without actually hurting the snake. And by the time we got here, he was wedged and yeah. it's better to just let him go, come back, see yeah. if he comes back, then thing. actually hurt him. So right now, somewhere, in this very close proximity to me is a really big anaconda and we're going to come back and we're going to see if we can get them. Morph Market is the number one online marketplace for all your reptiles and amphibians. You can search through over 60 categories to find your perfect new pet, whether it's the latest boa constrictor morph or your 150th crested gecko. It's all right here at one place. Morph Market. All right, but hang on a second though. I have to plan this because you see where he is, my dear? He's big. He's big. Just stand on that rock. Right there. Yep. Where's his head? Okay. okay. All right. This anaconda is back. Everybody has left. I'm on my own with Mikey. Yes. We are going to attempt to get this guy out. Yes. All right. Where's his head? Thank you. Yep. 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 Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Hi, buddy. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, that's not a rock. Where is he? Just grab him. Get him. Get him with both he's, hands. He's wet. Oh. Okay, well, we know he's right here, but he's going to leave tonight. He was wedged. I mean, I couldn't even yeah, pull. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. He's moved? Yes. I don't know where he is. So he came out, which means that if we chill, he's going to come out again and maybe be in a better position. Yeah. second shot at him too. Oh. These guys are very slippery, but I'm going to stay here until I get this snake. So what we've been doing is we've been kind of hanging out here, turning off all the flashlights, waiting for him to come out. I should have gotten him on that hit, but he's going to come out again and I'm going to give this another try. I'm not leaving here without this anaconda. Okay guys, he is back. That's a big part of his body you didn't see before. Yeah, no, he is a big, big snake. Okay, so there's his head, and where's he gonna go when I grab him? He's gonna go right under there. All right, so we've got this whole network of rocks that he can go and escape to. And right now, he is in a really bad position for me to grab him, because there's his body there, but his head is over here under these rocks. This is a big, big snake. And I don't know how to extract him from here without having to pull him against his scales, which I don't want to do. But I mean, look at this. I can literally go down and almost touch him. But if I do this here, it is really going to hurt the snake. Oh. And where is his head? Is his head reachable? No. Oh, these are just wedged. You can't even move these things. Yeah. He sees us. Okay. Ready? I'm gonna grab up here. Grab down there. You ready? One, two, three. Grab! I got him. Oh man. Can that rock move? Oh, he's absolutely pinch pinching my fingers between his body and the rock. 
but I've got him. Oh, he is wedged. Ouch. Oh, oh, oh. I can't reach in there without him squeezing my hand against these sharp rocks and he's gonna scrape all the skin off my hand. Oh, and these rocks don't move. Here we go, guys. Here we go, guys. All right, come on. Here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, this is a big anaconda. Oh, he's turning around, he's turning around, he's turning around. Okay, don't let go of my gear. I'm gonna go up here and see if I can get leverage. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, watch that head, watch that head. He's gonna come out fighting. Okay, got him, got him, got him, Mikey. Don't let go. Oh, whoa. I got him, I got him, I got him. Mikey, hold on to that back end. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh. Holy crap, I got him, I got him. Oh. oh my God, this is the best moment of my life right now. Woo! I'm gonna try to control that head, but look at that. Usually these guys come out teeth first, and he is not. But I don't wanna get too close to that head, because if he bites me out here in the middle of nowhere, and there is no hospital around here, there is no first aid, I am screwed if I get bit. And I'm trying to balance on these rocks at the same time. There we go. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. Yes! <laughs> yes! Look at that. Persistence and tenacity pays off once again. Oh, yes. I have been wanting an anaconda for all my life. All my life I have been waiting for this moment to come down here to South America and catch a big giant anaconda. And here he is. Oh man, dude, high five with an anaconda, man. I just need to catch my breath for a second and just take it all in. Whew. All right, come here. And I had to be sitting there wearing sandals, the worst footwear for this. We were up there eating dinner, somebody spotted it. It called us. Obviously we tried to get him that one time. Most of your body up on there. There you go, buddy. And we tried to get him that one time. Missed him that second time. Holy crap, third time's a charm. Oh, look at this beautiful snake. This is the most beautiful snake I have had in my hands in my life. Again, this is a dream come true. Coming down here to South America to catch the biggest snake species in the world. This is number one, the biggest snake species in the world. And as a matter of fact, just about a month ago, these guys were split. The green anaconda, which this is, was split between Northerns and Southerns. Here where we are in Suriname, this is the Northern green anaconda right now. Dude, how are you not jumping up and down and smiling and <laughs> carrying on and wetting your pants? We just caught an anaconda together. But look at this guy. I mean, I'm six and a half feet tall. This guy kind of dwarfs me. This guy is probably all of eight or nine feet. Woo! <laughs> thank you, thank you, Woo! thank you up there. Nice I, job, Dave. I, I appreciate all your help. Mikey, oh, thank you for your help. I would not have been able to get this without you. Oh, what a beauty. But here's the thing. If you look, all he wants to do is get away and he is strong. It is taking all of my strength to hold this guy. This is one strong, powerful snake. These guys literally can take down a deer out here. They can take down tapir as adults. But yeah, this is a snake that is absolutely all muscle. I mean, look at that. I can't even get my hand around this guy. I just want to sit here for a moment with him and just take this all in and share this beautiful animal space. And look at this. I mean, he is not biting. He is hissing just a little bit. There are smaller snakes in the world, much smaller snakes, that have bitten the crap out of me. But usually anacondas, they come out teeth first. And again, if this guy tagged me on my leg, on my arm, on my face, so now he's getting a little agitated. But if he tagged me with those big teeth that he has, and anacondas, just like most constrictors, they have very large needle-like teeth that point backwards. And when he grabs you, 
He grabs you and pulls backwards with those needle-like teeth and he would serrate me with all of those needles. And again, being out here in the middle of nowhere, we are eight hours down the river from the nearest town. And there is no way that I would be able to get first aid for a bite from this guy. But luckily, this guy really isn't showing any aggression, which is really surprising. He's hissing a little bit, but he's not opening his mouth. He's not flailing around. He's not trying to get away from me. I mean, as a matter of fact, he literally, I'm not even holding him with my other hand. He literally is sitting here right on my lap, just like a big old giant puppy dog that you are. I've been looking for these guys in the Amazon for years. I've been to Peru, I've been to Ecuador, miss seeing them there. You had to come to Suriname to find the number one biggest snake in the world, the Northern Green Anaconda. So I just wanna sit here for a second with him and just share his space and take in this absolutely amazing moment. Whew, unreal. All right, so this naked man right here is Mark and uh, Mark is a naked man that lives in the forest that knows how to measure this anaconda. This dot here, this mark is one meter. One meter. Okay, one meter. Yep. Should we start a betting pool to see how long he is? What do you think, Bob? I, I think you were right. I think I think three meters. Three meters. Nine okay. feet. I'm gonna say over nine feet. Over nine feet. Okay. I'm gonna say nine you feet. Um, I'm just gonna say over nine feet too. Oh, yes, 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 yes. One meter here to this dot. Can you spin around? Okay. okay that's nine. two meters. We got two meters. Eighty. Ninety. One hundred again. That's three meters. Ooh. Yeah, we're over nine. Thirty-five. Three meter thirty-five, and the tail is not the full length, so it's like like it's like three meter. Three meters and thirty-five <laughs> centimeters. Thank you for holding my snake meters. while we measured him, Bob. Oh, I appreciate that. Can I have my snake back? All right, sweetheart. Back you go. Oh, one more moment together. Are you ready? Off you go, sweetheart. Oh, you want to come back? Oh, how cool is that? He loves you. He loves all this attention. Look at this. This is absolutely insane. I just let this giant anaconda go, and he just wants to hang with me. He's all like, right along. This is absolutely insane. I just released a nine foot plus wild anaconda, and he's just sitting here with me. This moment right now, I'm just speechless. And there she goes. Guys, seriously. I've been waiting for that moment my entire life to have a giant anaconda finally in my hands. You know, as you guys know, I travel the world. I go on some amazing reptile adventures. This one, I don't know how to top this one and I don't know if I ever will, but you know, I'm gonna get back out there and I'm gonna try to find an even bigger anaconda next time. So anyway, guys, there's lots more reptile adventures coming up from right here in Suriname. So as always, thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.